Joe, what is the difference between Election Day and Thanksgiving? What? On Thanksgiving, you get a turkey for the day. On Election Day, you get a turkey for four years. That was a hot take. (laughs) All right. What does a turkey on Thanksgiving and a woman have in common? What? I blew it. What does a turkey on Thanksgiving oh and a woman with a tan have in common? What? The, the white meat's the best part. Oh. I, I'm ill-prepared. Yeah, for oh, God. I, I, I'm so ill-prepared, I don't even have a comeback. <laughs> um, hey, this is Jacques. This is Joe, and welcome to Carnival Personnel. And Jacques, welcome back. Carnival Personnel was recorded in a dank, moldy basement. Joe and Jacques, it's carnival personnel. Joe and Jacques, to their wives this show is their personal hell. Well, the show sounds the same every single week. Pats are great, Trump is lame, and Joe barely speaks. Who you think's still listening? Who you think's still listening? Besides Jim and Biff, yeah, yeah. don't forget Richard. Here's a random review. No one cares about you two, Joe and Jock. Joe and Jock, Joe and Jock, Joe and Jock. I'll have to go away to the other side of the world more often just so you have the excuse of playing that when I come back. That might be my all-time favorite. That and your uh, your George Barely uh, uh, self-indulgent theater, I think, are my two favorite highlights of doing this now over 100 podcasts. That is embarrassing. It is. We Like, I didn't notice, you know, until... We had the anniversary a little while ago, the one-year anniversary, but then, you know, I, I was scrolling through, like, you know, looking for a podcast the other night, uh, and, you know, scroll by ours, like, in the library, and, it, and I'm like, wait a minute, 101? We've passed on, we've been yelling at each other in your basement for 101 of these? They've gone to plaid. Uh, well, we should name this episode Intervention or something <laughs> Because we have to stop This has uh, gone on too far but, well, but Congratulations Joe on putting up with me that long Thank you uh, you, you as well So uh, we'll, we'll start the uh, start. You know I I'm, I'm, don't want to even say it's a sad thing But you know everybody knows by now uh, You know earlier in the week uh, Stan Lee passed away We're going to you know, cobble together our thoughts about a Stanley uh, sideshow for later this week. But uh, 95 years. Well, you know, by the way, let's not gloss over the fact that later this week, the sideshow will be on Thanksgiving. Right. Well, it gives people something to be thankful about. Our podcast <laughs> about the passing of the great Stan Lee. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I mean, you're going to be driving that ship as you do with every other podcast that isn't ghostbusters related <laughs> no that we 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 we've had some uh match game board game history you know podcast and <laughs> some puppeteer podcasts there's been other ones that's true yeah, yeah so i look forward to that so uh and and we're not going to get uh too much into it but uh four days ago i was in 95 degree temperature and loving it not so much today. Oh, uh, why is that? Because we got a fucking snowstorm already. And a, a storm, an actual schools closing in many towns. My little uh pony. Angels. Okay. <laughs> my little pony. Oh, my, my little, little pony. Little pony. Do, 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 do. Anyways, <laughs> uh that's her thing. <laughs> right, Patton. <laughs> and so uh honestly, and my foot's not healed from the break last February. It's it's still not right. It isn't 70% there? And now I am such an old man, so afraid of slipping on black ice again. I was concerned about you coming up my driveway, and it's dry. Like yeah. I was just like, is he going to make it? It's a, you know, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. But seriously, so ill I mean, I mean ill prepared for it. Like the snowblower is still in the shed in the backyard. I haven't I haven't put away the lawnmower and taken out the snowblower yet. And it's like, you know, we di- we didn't take down like, you know, the um 
little canopy down by the pool yet. It's down now. It's uh, the six inches of snow helped uh, helped collapse it. So uh, so got to get a new one next year. But literally, dude, what the fuck? I was scrambling to like rake leaves off of my driveway so they wouldn't be matted down with the slush because I knew we weren't going to get a whole lot of snow where I am. Uh, but I, I knew also that it was going to just turn into the urban, slushy, messy gunk that uh, would eventually wash away. But um, I, you're right. I, um, I am upset that I live in New England again. I, uh, I, I, I much rather go back to the uh, Iraq border. You were long, Yeah, I, I just picture you like staring out the window, like singing somewhere out there to <laughs> the Kuwaiti peoples. You know, wishing that you were, you know, avoiding mortar fire and, <laughs> I don't know, Kuwait's a pretty chill place, right? It can be. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, it's interesting. Uh, it's dry. The country is a dry country. We In Abu Dhabi and in Qatar, there's alcohol on the basis. Um, you you, you got to scan your card in and you can have three drinks every 18 hours. Um but in in Kuwait, same thing. It, when you f- Kuwait, much like Saudi, uh, when you fly over their airspace, you have to round up the alcohol on the plane. So if you got a beer ten minutes before entering the airspace, they literally come by and take it out of your hand before you enter their airspace. Wow. Yeah. Hey, that, you know that's how you know that's how they roll. It, it is. But uh. But yeah. I, I no no. I'm 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 so. And I've I've told a couple of my contacts. It's like you know, uh, hey, I'm uh, thinking about moving back this way. So anything, you know, of course, you know the situation with management's mom and her health, and the you know the hundred and one podcasts with this, you know. But <laughs> but if we can do that from you know Kuwait, which sounded great by the way, fantastic. I mean, we might as well just do it over a CB radio next. <laughs> Uh, I think we'd actually get more listeners if we did it on TV. <laughs> uh, break, break, break our one nine. I call Rubber Ducky. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Joe, where, where does Carnival personnel uh, stand on fat shaming? Uh, I think it's pro. Good. Okay. Because <laughs> I am going to fat shame myself every week from now on by saying how much I weigh during the podcast so I can literally, I, like going on this trip, It's here's, the, here's one of the things. I thought, okay, I'm going to a warm climate, going to be with professional athletes, I'm out of shape, but I'll be moving around. I ate more on this trip. I mean, it's weird because, you know, I, you know, army moves on its stomach. They're not kidding. It's like everywhere you turned around, they were like, hey, fatty, get back into this room full of every food you have no possible will of saying no to. It's all for, you know, and it's like one of those things, like, I can buy all the beer I want. And, but you go to some place where it's an open bar, and this this thing goes off in your head that says you're you're cheating yourself if you don't. You can't afford not to binge, <laughs> right? I mean, I don't want to lose out on the deal. <laughs> yeah, right. Fear of missing out on fatness. So, so every week I'm going to shame myself. When I left Qatar, I was 175. Like wow. so, two years ago, kilograms. I was oh. 175. <laughs> I've truly put on 75 pounds. No, 85. Uh, scant 85 pounds. I have to lose basically your oldest. I was going to say you put on a third child. <laughs> Give know? birth to that baby now. So, so uh, fat shaming's okay. Okay. So what? So well, hold on. What, okay. Let, I was gonna Can say. I please eat this Twix? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Don't let me interrupt you. <laughs> eat the eat one of the wrapped ones. <laughs> Not one of the weird, l- really unwrapped ones that came out of the package that you opened. That was creepy. So uh, it was. So the trip. Well, wait, 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 I want to. Do- well, let's, what's the number? You said you were gonna announce your weight on the podcast. Oh, I'm two sixty. Okay, I didn't. Yeah, I'm, no, I was one seventy five. Yep. I'm now two sixty. Okay. I've literally put on eighty five pounds okay. in two years. I think you did the. You said that I added eighty five, but I didn't hear the number two sixty. I, I just want no, to see, say it one more time. No, see, this is this is your pro fat shaming by <laughs> making me say it for a third time, just so everybody can be like, "Wow!" <laughs> I don't have an elephant sound, so you know, is there is there one on that butter uh, it, button it, thing over there? Right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, All right. So good. Uh, 
it's good to put that stuff out there. You put yourself out there. Perfect. You know? Yeah. So now, back from the trip, it went fantastic. Would go back and do it in a heartbeat. There's one tiny little twinge. We, uh, my partner Latasha and I, are the... Uh, I'm trying to find, find the right way to say this. There's a with the people that we book with. There's a guy I've known for the last three years, Daniel. There's another guy, you know, Captain Cook, who are in an office pissing contest with each other. And truly, we are the casualty. And they just canceled the WNBA one in three weeks. Oh. Uh, and, and well, but here's the funny thing: they canceled it. Um. And then want the money back because you've already paid the players. And we're like, okay, you can have the travel money back and all like – because they forward money for like the visas and some extra luggage and incidentals and stuff like that. But I'm like, no, the players passed up opportunities. The players took time out of their schedule, as we all did. But literally, these players go overseas and play in other tournaments and do other appearances. They took this time out. You're still paying them. They're like, oh, well, you know, we want them back in April. It's like, great. You can pay them when they come back in April as well. Of course, in April, they're going to be back in their season or getting ready for their season. They're in preseason then. So unlikely you're going to get them. And it's a shame because we had a guy on the team, very just a character, and he was the last one I would have expected to say when we rounding the end of the tour. And one night, all ten of us were at dinner. We should do this all the time. We like he said to the guys, we should have two seasons. As soon as we're done with the big three, take a couple weeks off, then we should do this for two months. So that's how that's how in Qatar things went a little sideways, um, but it all worked out. It ended up being what started out like an ominous end to the tour turned out to be the best three days that we had uh, for a lot of reasons I won't bore everybody with. But it was fantastic in all the guys, and it's exactly what I had told you know, my new partner uh, with this. I said, look, w- this is why I anticipate happening. The players are going to say, when are we going next or where are we going? And oh, by the way, five of my buddies want to know how they can get on the next tour type thing. And that's exactly what happened. Um, at the same time, the seven bases we went to all of them while we were there, like, can you, how soon can you come back and not play, but do speaking engagements? It would be great to play too, but we want you. So we went seven for seven. So everybody on the base side, and it was as cliche as it is. I cannot tell you how many people have, you know, came up to me and said, uh, this was the best day of my deployment. Like, I never thought. This kind of thing. They have bands and comedians, but first of all, when are these guys going to get to play with a half a dozen ex NBA guys again? Yeah, it's fantasy camp, right? Exactly. And all you had to do is join the army and do three tours of duty. Uh, But but seriously, everybody was blown away. But how funny these guys were! How engaging. Um, What you know, and when we can get prices right in here, we'll do. A whole probably a two episode sideshow thing just on it. I will say, uh, more than ever, I miss the F and H guys because these bus rides were essentially these guys F and H, and I was kind of more a fly on the wall. And I would GoPro the shit out of the bus the next time because it was hilarious. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, uh, Eleven seconds. Oh, you didn't ask a question yet. Um, What's the longest time on the bus without the N word being used? <laughs> Eleven seconds, and that's just by you. <laughs> that's just by me, right? Uh, but seriously, it was it was uh, the characters on it. That it was it was an eclectic group. You know, there was one guy who was really out there and really loud. One guy who barely spoke but really sweet. Bunch of guys in the middle. Real and. and Four of the six guys are friends, friends, like everybody knew each other, and the other two guys are friendly with them, and even became more friends, but four of the guys are just really, really tight, so it was. It was just almost like, you know, if you came along with the F&H guys on, on a trip, you know everybody, and you fit in, um, 
It was hysterical. Yeah, and, and there would be just as many N-words. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> you bastard. Uh, but yeah, so that's it on that. Uh, but, but... Yeah. So, and, and I mean this. I, I reached out to Joe the other day. So uh, while we were on the bass in guitar, there was a band that also played the same night. Okay, band, like a, a, a solid... B plus, you know, um, I almost say an older band, but you know, and I and I say that me being almost fifty, these guys are probably late thirties, um, uh, early forties. They've been doing this for fourteen years, like doing these USO, um, Air Force Entertainment, you know, Armed Forces, Armed yeah. Forces thing. Th- this show, there wasn't even a tour. They flew in just for this show. I mean, they were. Truly in the air, almost as long as their feet were on the ground in guitar. You know, they came in, you know, the night before, were there the whole day, flew out, like had like a 3.30 time to leave for the airport the next morning. So it was kind of crazy. Are you an American band? Yeah, yeah, actually out of Connecticut. Um, You know, we'll post a clip. It's funny, they ended up, like, when I looked them up, when I got back to you know to our barracks uh you know abc world you know abc news like uh, world news tonight had done like something on them like four years ago an interesting piece you know on them but i had talked to them it's like you know hey you guys probably you know do you ever sometimes he tour with other bands sometimes it's part of a bigger show uh it was just them and i had talked to our guy who lined up our thing i know a couple like solo artists who are, are, are like funny like we it would never work like I, I don't think because we don't do cover Not tunes. With that attitude. We don't really do like they play. They had a lot of a similar music to us, but they would play one of their songs, and then a Who song, oh. and then one of their songs, and then Jesse's girl, and then a Led Zeppelin or <laughs> Je- right. The, it wasn't Jesse's, wasn't Jesse's girl. But I'm trying to think of what it was now. But it, it was in, in, in that ilk. Okay. Uh, we and all the crappy banter, like like the absolutely patronizing banter that some bands do that in a million years neither Dan or Thank you, Kandahar. Uh, you know. Um but but you know, but I did say, look, you know, my like my friend Rod, very funny. Like hysterical, you know, his songs are 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 are, are great. Just and I'm like, but if you guys had like a, a solo artist and a comedian to, you know, introduce it, you could have a three plus hour thing, you know, comedian, com- comedian slash host slash MC, like a whole Bob Hope thing. And honestly, I started to go back that night and just write like the cheesiest bunch of stuff. And I've said to you, it's like, hey, because at the same time, you know, there's this show coming up uh, at Uncharted, December 14th, Lowell Mass. Um, like, we need a fourth band that we haven't filled yet. And I thought, Instead of doing that, maybe I could talk you. Got a, it was a hard no? A big hard no. It was a I, hard think, no. I, think, I think I put a middle finger emoji <laughs> in there as well. But I did. I thought about, and now I'm trying to think. It's like, because it is a performance art space. You know, maybe I could talk you into George Washington and a washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little inside joke about our bad improv sketch. No, I probably... I th- I, I know from doing a hundred of these stupid podcasts, <laughs> I am a terrible performer, public speaker, enunciator, dresser, you name it, I'm not it. So, no, I'm a I, ske- I sketch performer? Yeah, terrible. Horrible. <laughs> um, so, so, what you're saying is you're going to help me write stuff. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but now, but I have. I have thought about, God, could I. Could I cheesy Bob hope this up? And but I did. I mean, I want to go back and do more of these tours. Um, I I I definitely want to get AJ, Mister Price, on some of these tours. He was really really great at this. Um, but you know, I'll bore you. I'll bore you more when we do the the complete uh, recap and have somebody here to correct me on my um, <laughs> my wayward stories. Yeah, I'll, I'll be your audience of one. <laughs> Joseph, Thanksgiving yeah. coming up, couple days. Boo. What, what's I a, mean, <laughs> we, any any plans? Uh, you know what? I we don't. We I, I think we're going to a, you know family member's house 
We didn't get a formal invite yet. We, we, we usually Never wait. me. I know. <laughs> well, exactly. We usually wait until about two days before Thanksgiving to kind of iron out the details. Who's doing what, where, when, why. Um, no, um, we really don't have any big plans. Are you hosting Thanksgiving this year? Probably not. No. Um, we are at 7 in the morning. We vo- we're volunteering at this church. We volunteered at last year. Um soup kitchen kind of homeless like feeding the homeless thing uh the boys really liked it last year and i'll admit i'm really disappointed in both management and myself because the boys really liked helping last year and we really liked helping last year and we said we're not being those people who show up once a year and doing this uh (laughs) fun fact (laughs) (laughs) turns out (laughs) That's exactly who we are. Well, just do it twice a year. You, you know what? You go know, on Christmas. What? <laughs> but even if we did twice a year, that'd be great. You know, and it's funny, though, because I did call a couple times. And basically, in, in Lowell, anyways, the way all this, this one place, like a different church runs it. Like there's 50 churches in Lowell. And the, the one that this is run out of. They have a big kitchen. They have a real place to host it. But a different church comes in almost every day of the month. So they're like, oh, well, find out when your church comes in. Uh, you know, the church is agnostic. We, not, we aren't as organized <laughs> as, <laughs> as, as you might think. Uh, the services are uh, sparse. And, and, um, <laughs> but, but that's the whole thing. So it's, it, it's not like if it, you can just show up there and you can, they have a sign up schedule where you could come in. But I would, I, and I, I said that last year, it's like, man, it'd be great if, you know, I picked the boys up at school at like four, if we could go over once every few weeks. So a little early for new year's resolutions, but if we have this podcast next Thanksgiving, I hope to have done it at least four or five times. That's great. I've done it. Uh, my family and I actually have done it nuns. <laughs> Is that the word? Oh wait, never. No, <laughs> never. We are not good people. Yes, but uh, you allow me and my bag of my children to drift in here near weekly basis. Hey, that's fine. We've done the same with your family for years, so um, so we will. So we'll do that. Then we'll go to my mom's, or as I like to call it, upper management's home, where there will probably be twenty-five to thirty people. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, and the, as you've said in the past, you're like the fourth loudest. <laughs> That's, unless you've met my family. <laughs> uh, I, I, people do. People find that hard to believe. I, I, but like, you know, Biff has met my, my mom and stuff like that and my brother. Yeah. When they were all together, fourth. I'm uh, Same boat. I think we talked about this. I am probably the most quiet. Well, no, I think there was a guy who died. Yeah. So I am... <laughs> Not the most quiet, but yeah, I come from another very loud Portuguese-ish family. Um, very classy people. Uh, they're, 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 they are pretty nice people. And so, and then we'll do Thanksgiving at our house on Friday. You're not doing Black Friday? We're not doing, you know, I, I, look, I was just on a bus with 10 for the Oh, my, you, what the, what I, I knew you I, were, <laughs> there's no such thing as low-hanging fruit with Jock. <laughs> It's all good. It's all ripe, ready to eat, ready to serve. Hey, never miss a chance to be a racist. How presidential of me. Um, <laughs> no, but was so, I know, we're not, we don't need anything. It, I know. I, I, it's so, st- we were actually invited, or I was actually invited by our friend Jim to come uh, shopping with him and Steve tonight, the day that we were actually recording the podcast, uh, to do Christmas shopping. And I said, no, we, I have much more important things to do. This podcast. Thank you. So, but yeah, I'm not a, I used to be. Wait, is Amazon closed? Did they close him? <laughs> <laughs> is, is the Google broken? I know. Uh, yeah, we didn't really do a lot of Black Friday shopping. You know, when we had our, we, when I started a family, we didn't really get on the whole Black Friday train. You know, and I was never into, like, I didn't need. A TV every year that badly, you know, like that's really the only thing you can get on Black Friday. At least that's of importance to me. Like once you get the the big TV, you're good for about. You're five good, years. right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Could use a mini fridge down here. <laughs> this has been pointed out once. Well, yeah, somebody came did. out once, twice. Yeah. It's been mentioned. Yeah. Uh, 
But yeah, I mean, that's the whole thing. It's like we we've been in the house a little like a year and a week now. You, you, like not not a year and two weeks yet. Eh, about a year and two weeks. Bought the TV. Bought the fridge. The 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 washing. There's nothing. There's no big item we need. Like there's no big game system that's coming. Up. Wait, there's. There's no new game system, right? There's, right. There's no, no, there's no. Now that I'm saying that, I'm <laughs> yeah, like, right. wait a minute. Not so fast. So there's nothing I possibly need that I'm going to save enough that I can possibly imagine dealing with that. PlayStation VR. Yeah, but... <laughs> no, I'm just going... Yeah. Is that a Black Friday thing? I don't know. Like, Maybe. those things don't tend to... Yeah, it depends. Sometimes you do get... Like, I've actually gotten last year... I kind of lie about the Black Friday thing. I did do online Black Friday stuff. Like there were game, video games that had just come out, like brand new games. Like usually go for like sixty. I got for like fifteen bucks. Wow. You know, so uh, which I've yet to play. But <laughs> <laughs> have we reviewed them? Uh, maybe. Okay. But uh, no, you 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 do get better deals online nowadays. You know, and uh, we we might not and talk they about bring it. Bring it to your house. Yeah, I know. Yep. Thanks to that lovely company, Amazon. Where are they? Where, you know, whatever happened to Amazon? You know, I uh, haven't, they haven't heard much about them Good. lately. They're not doing much, right? They just kind of stagnated. They plateaued. Pretty much, yeah. Right. Yep. This is, you know, this is the peak, and then now we're going to hit the valley. Any day now. Yes. That cliff. Just waiting. Uh, so that's about it on that. Uh, on a uh, changing a topic, so we, we barely, I don't even... Remember, did we talk about the California fires last week? We and brought them up, yes. It was really w- when I, probably when I first moved there, I was living in Pasadena, and South Pasadena, probably my second year there and commuting to Burbank. I went down this connecting highway called the 118, and it goes, it's pretty high up on the hill, and it cuts right through Glendale, and great view. Of the city, that strip of road, that five mile strip of road. I don't know how many times, whether I was in in Abu Dhabi or Kuwait, watching the footage on the different networks of those giant, like the walls of flames, like right along the right along the highway. Yeah. Like that's where I, you know, my my, my friend, you know, uh, Kim and I used to have to commute back and forth. You know, to get to, you know, she worked at the Radford lot and I, I worked at that same place that you did on Olive Ave there in Burbank. And that's like the little road that we had taken forever. And you see the the shots of the helicopters coming in and putting the um, fire retardant or the, I don't know if they're 747s or what the, the big planes just filled with that red powdery stuff that they just dropped. Yeah. But getting really close to the side of the highway type thing. They nosedive, and then they, like the helicopters especially, like they just nosedive, and then whoop, off they go. Um, yeah, it's, and, and the, you know, the toll, that's like well over 60 now. and it's yeah. just, Like that one town, and, and it just has... Paradise. W- Paradise. I was thinking, has a real ironic name. Right. I guess it's gone, it was gone in like a matter of a couple hours. I know. Like, like it doesn't exist. There's not like a standing structure. Yeah. It's they've uh, paved paradise, <laughs> and uh, heard uh, heard uh, our, our good friend Billy Ray's daughter lost her house. Yeah, you know it's a bunch of other and, celebrities. Yeah, well, I didn't realize that she was living with uh, Liam um, Hemsworth. Well, that's management is uh, insisting that I, you know, forge a closer relationship <laughs> in, in order to try to get a wedding invite uh, uh-huh. in, in the in the future. Yeah, though they've been an on again, off again thing for like. Five years. Oh, okay. See, I'm out of it. Yeah. You know, but you know, and, and, and to be honest, I, I wouldn't have known that either if not for management. Right. Well, you know, that's it is terrible. And um, I mean, if, if you can donate money, that's essentially it because obviously the federal government's not doing a fucking thing about it. Well, that's because of the poor management. Of right. The, you know, no, that's California's fault. I forgot. Right. Yeah. yeah right, it has yeah. nothing to do with the federal no, management. No, of, even, even though like two thirds of the forestry land is on. Federal land, it's like it's still somehow. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's also we're talking about two different things because there's the the campfire which was set by it was a, it's a brush fire just kind of started, and then there's the 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 Woolsey fire that's another one, and I is it that one where they're looking at the utility company as a possible maybe instigator of the fire oh yeah like is it uh, pg and e like uh, pacific gas and electric is that it they uh i guess are 
being investigated a little bit into maybe doing something that may have started the fire. So interesting. Stay tuned for that. But yeah, I know. I, you know, it's good to know that we have a president who's sympathetic, who feels the pain of all of the people of America, and extends an olive branch. To those in need in time of crisis. Yes, but his olive branch had a marshmallow on the end, and he was making <laughs> s'mores and then throwing paper towels. He at sided with fire. He said it. <laughs> Look, fire, it, fire. It's just fire being fire, man. I mean, you you put the state there, like why? Uh, look. <laughs> there were fine flames on both sides. <laughs> um, oh yeah. lord! When you talk about, and I mean this, whether it's it's a fictional character who winds up on Dexter's slab or or the John Wayne Gacy's of the world. The complete lack of empathy is what the sociopaths have. And that complete lack of empathy. And, and we're not, you know, side weighing into it. But when I since I've been gone, truly two yoga studios shot up. Uh uh the the, the shooting the shooting in Thousand Oaks which, like again, we talked about, was just miles from where we did stand-up. Dude, how fucked up is it that one of the victims in that survived Vegas? Yeah, yeah. I know. It, it, that's the country. You know, you, if you go to venues in America, chances are you might end up in the crossfire. So let's see. I was in... Three Middle Eastern countries? <laughs> right, unscathed. You uh, actually, yeah. You actually came back... Um, a little um, fatter. You know, I did. Uh, and, and this, this, I don't know what that has to do with the shooting, but I just wanted to point out that you got fat. And I always say that, you know, it's like uh, our, our friend Dan Cray, awful. Like, yeah, go back early, mid-90s. Uh, his grandfather was shot, uh, survived, but shot in a home invasion in Florida. And Dan always said, two terms in World War II <laughs> – in Europe, yeah, not a scratch, right? Shot in my own kitchen, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And, but but, anyways, yeah. uh, but let's talk about a couple of positive things. So, the blue tsunami didn't happen. Mm -hmm. The blue wave did happen. Yeah, um, uh, more of a more of a of a medium tide, not a really high tide. But the wave has increased a little bit since we've last talked. Yeah, it's it's the, the aftershocks where. The votes are coming in, and people are counting votes, and turns out that uh, there are districts that were initially called for Republicans that are now flipping to Democrats. Did you follow this? Uh, how many, trick question, hmm. how many elected officials in New England, the six states, uh, GOP? Uh how many elected officials? In, the, in, the, in this, in this new between senators and uh, and Congress people, like federal senators, you know, and Congress people. Oh, okay, elected. you're not counting governors, right? No, not okay. counting governors. Oh, okay, how many? Uh, do one. Zero. Oh, zero. Oh, because oh, uh, Collins didn't. Uh, Co didn't Collins is up in two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She now is the only senator, Congressperson in Washington from New England. Uh, who's uh, and uh, I'm thinking her days are numbered. I'm gonna say uh, about two years. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. You never know. You got to take these things election by election because two years from now, they could be fed up with the Democrats in the House, and then all of a sudden there could be a red tide coming in. I I, I don't. You know because w f for once, let's hope that the Democrats. Let, let's be optimistic that they don't the infighting like this. Let's out Nancy Pelosi. This is look. I, one of the reasons a lot of people don't like Nancy Pelosi is vagina. The GOP oh. has spent millions upon millions running all their campaigns against her, and it's bled on over. People hear it. It's becoming the truth. It's becoming, and, and that's one of those things. It's like she's an effective leader, lover or hater. Let's let's have a little consistency. She, let's she, let's literally let's for once band together like they like the other side does and one of their things they they have an agenda that they put forward one of the first things on their agenda is restate voter rights because as we found out that yeah you 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 don't have actually technically in the constitution you do not have a right to vote uh but they want to make sure all votes are counted in this you know first of all uh 
Florida? Really? Again? You guys? <laughs> you guys? That's just Florida being Florida. It's like the fires. You can't blame Florida for just doing its thing. Uh, but when you, it's so funny, and I and I've said it, and Joe, you said it, and it's just, um, you can't prove I said that. If your vote didn't matter, why are they fighting so hard to take away? Yes. And one side is out there saying. Let's not count absentee ballots. Let's not count the military ballots. One one senator from like is it is it a senator from Mississippi? It wasn't a hidden tape. It wasn't like she was recorded on a hot mic she didn't know it was open. She was talking to a constituent saying, Yeah, there's a lot of people voting that we don't want voting because, you know, they don't have our interest. Let's make it harder for liberals to vote. Like flat out saying, you know, liberals in uh in, in states like Mississippi, um, Tend to have different complexions than us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Native when, American. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Uh, but that's the thing. It's like as these recounts are happening, one side, like in 2000, is fighting tooth and nails. Don't count all these votes. Yep. And uh, you know you know who you know who I'm starting to like a little bit? Who? Jeff Flake. Why? Well, because Jeff Flake, uh, who really stands up. To to this administration now that he's leaving, um, yeah, he stands up, but yet voted for Kavanaugh, voted for the tax. Should, should I go on? Are we yeah, all good. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, um, yeah, his seat was, uh, and and he he was somebody who was popular. He's somebody who would have won election. Mm-hmm. Uh, he stepped aside, thinking it was a safe thing to do. He was tired of it. Um, Arizona for the first time in like thirty years. Oh, that's a uh, Kristen Cinema female. Democrat Smoke show senator. So, right. uh, thank you, Jeff Flake, uh, and I forget who one of the other ones who stepped away, thinking it was going to be safe. So, no, we did not flip that. We did not flip the Senate. We, that, that's not going to happen, yeah. no matter how many recounts we do. Uh, and that's really important because you know, with the notorious like RGB like breaking ribs a couple weeks ago, we can't have a third person put in there. But, uh, but it is nice to see that. Also, in California, you know Orange County is the red wall. Yeah. You realize there's not one uh, federal White. representative from the state of California? It, complete blue. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah, yeah. Reagan country, like, yeah. like, like staunch Reagan country, all of those elections went blue. Yes, I did see that map where they showed the 2016 and the 2018, and yes, all blue. And it's funny because like having lived 20 plus years in California, uh, San Diego, more red than blue. Uh, LA, of course, blue. San Francisco, all blue. But the rest of the state is very red, but oh, especially yeah. or, like from, from LA up to up to you know the bay area it's all red mm-hmm. um and, and especially up north yeah yeah and then way up north but yeah this this orange county like it's 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 almost creepy how like as soon as you go over to anaheim it's just the vibe at angel games versus the vibes at like dodger games the vibes at uh, a duck games versus the vibe the king games completely different 20 miles apart but still uh, yeah, it's like, did I just enter Texas? Like, what's going on? But now, you know, so I, you know, so the blue wave wasn't a tsunami, but it was a wave. And if they keep their shit together, now here's what's funny: you have Mitch McTurtle starting to already say, "Well, you know, I hope that they're not planning on just being obstructionists." It's like, wait, you're the guy who in 2008 flatly said. My only job is to make Obama one term president. You guys stalled everything like and and bragged about it Bra- they were the do nothing Congress like the Congress from two thousand eight to twelve was the second and last hundred years least um effective effective. Only to be outdone by the two hundred to the two hundred and twelve to two hundred and sixteen Congress. So uh-huh. now that you guys have had the Congress, the House, the Senate, and, and, and the Supreme Court the last two years, and it's just so funny. Now, on the other hand, you know, Lindsey Graham has gone way out and has said, uh, "Well, if they're going to overreach, because basically now." All the Congress like investigations uh, that have been stifled and the and the crap that has happened, like you know, hurting these different things moving forward. 
that that's going to go away come January 3rd. And Lindsey Graham's like, well, if they're going to start investigations and start subpoenaing people, um, you know, then, then we, you know, we are going to have investigations of our own. And the first one that they want to bring to the floor is Hillary's emails. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Like playing the hits, literally. Yeah, like they still want to, and, and, this and is, they're like Lover Boy, and everybody's working for the weekend. Like yeah. that's like their go-to. Like play a different song, man. Uh, I just can't believe that. And, and what is a legal term? And J- John's going to chastise me. Uh, you can't get tried for the same crime twice. Double, double indemnity. Double uh, jeopardy. Oh, wait, no, a double indemnity is yeah. Well, double jeopardy is you can't get tried for the. You can't. Yeah, that's double jeopardy. Uh, is that okay? Yeah, like, to, once you're found I guilty, there was a bigger once you're word. found not guilty, like OJ can't be tried again for murder. If that would be double jeopardy for the same murder, she could he murdered right. somebody okay. else. <laughs> you're hey, you're gonna find a loophole, I guess, somewhere. <laughs> Uh, but it is. It's just so funny that they're all saying the the same. Well, you know, I, I'm hoping that they're going to want to reach across the aisle. Like you guys have done nothing except say, "Oh, we got 51 votes." Uh, fuck you. Uh, so what the Dems have said is they want to restore the Voting Rights Act that was gutted by the Supreme Court two years ago, and they also want to. Uh, Read, you know, go back to the pre-2010 maps, the gerrymandering maps. Yes, good job. <laughs> you know, Those flashcards are working. They have worked because you're like, think Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what's with these maps? <laughs> <laughs> what's with Ohio? So that's that's on their agenda. They put it flat out there. It, so, yeah, might there be another red wave? Might racism keep rearing its ugly head? Yes. However, if we can get uh, voting legislation passed, if we can get – now, like they get in there January 3rd. They got to get the fucking shit going for the presidential election to make sure that people can vote in Ohio, that you can vote – like. It doesn't matter what you do in Mississippi and Arkansas. Those are those are gone for another Lost. 50, 50 years plus. Right. But all the states that... Well, like Pennsylvania was redistricted. Right. And look at how well it turned out for, you know, the not Republicans. And so, so that's the thing. If we can get Florida shit together now, you know... Oh, God. But anyway... So. I keep thinking of that, that, that gif of Bugs Bunny sawing off Florida and just like it's, you know... Uh, you know, not a bad idea. It's and and, and you it's not, can't make up the fact that that sh- state is so fucked up and it looks like a penis. Just <laughs> You're right, right. It it uh, you know what says uh, says a lot about men. Michael Avenatti, fine man. Hit job. Um, I don't know. According to him, he never hit <laughs> uh, a woman. I don't know. This is sort of the thing we just sort of let it play out. It he. It could be a hit job. It could be a. Um, it could be a, a real charge. You just gotta let let the investigation continue. You know, um, like with every other accuser, you sort of take them on the accusation and and, and just investigate further. If it turns out to be nothing, great. But it doesn't take away the fact that that stigma. I mean, there were not a lot of good things to like about. There was not a lot to like about Michael Avenatti, even as a liberal. You know, yeah, he's out there championing for Stormy Daniels and trying to take down Trump. But there was always that, what's he really up to? And, of course, now we know he's trying to go for some sort of t- weird 2020 presidential thing. He, he might want to – he'll probably end up with, like, a TV show on well, MSNBC it, when, he, or when he jumped in the Brett Kavanaugh thing and then the caravan – or the, the – I think he sees himself as the sort of the white um, – yeah, I guess like the 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 creepy Al Sharpton, if there is a creepier Al okay. Sharpton, right. you know what I mean? Like he's like this. I guess that's maybe what he's trying to insinuate himself as. But this this stigma will stick with him. Like just the, just the fact, like Chris Hardwick, for example, was you know accused of you right. know no same, same thing. My, my friend Danny, and, yeah. and that was like it's funny because. I wanted to pitch Danny's band to go do some stuff, and one of the people's like, "Oh, isn't this happening?" I'm like, "That allegation came out, and nothing's happened a year later." 
you know, so anyway, so yeah, moving on from the, um, but, on, a, on a fun or, or an interesting note, um, CNN reporter uh, Acosta got Jim his Acosta. Uh, pass back today, but on a Fifth Amendment. So the judge didn't do a complete ruling. They're like, here's your pass back on Fifth Amendment for due process. There's they they took it away without having just cause to take it away, but not a First Amendment thing that he will rule on later. But it hasn't stopped. Uh, Huckleberry Sanders from going out there saying um, that, yeah, it's a big win for us, even though we got it back. And it, it, <laughs> I, I, I'm like, I'm a robot in a 1950s movie with too much information and I can't confuse. <laughs> I can see the smoke. When she says, well, we have to have policies to, ha- uh, to have more decorum. Right. And, decorum. And which... Instantly cues everybody playing Blotus. Grab him by the pussy. Well, no, well, just, that pretty, just, yeah. just that day telling him he's an awful person, shut up, enough with you. I mean, it's like, yeah. wait, for them to say decorum, like they could have used any other word. If there's one word, there's, there's 516 one word ways to describe this administration. Decorum is not... Where would you rate decorum if you had to infinity? Well, uh, like as far as most important value to least important value? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but this is the uh, an example of the modus operandi of the administration and the Republicans is accuse others of doing the exact same thing that you're doing. He's not being a very nice person. Wait a minute. No, you, you got the pronouns wrong. <laughs> You're not being a very nice person. You need to uh, have more decorum. That's what I said. Right. You need to. <laughs> right. Who's on first? I don't know. Third base. <laughs> <laughs> I'll break your arm if you say third base again. Um, I'm not a fan. We'll never be a fan, per se. Of the podcast. But the, uh, well, no, just you in general. Oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, how, do you, how, how do you think the... Uh, the pillow talk goes in the Kellyanne Conway uh, household, where yet again her husband this week. Well, I assume she just sleeps in a separate coffin. So, <laughs> <laughs> and you see, we should do a duo, a stand-up thing together. All right, no, you're the dummy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, What's with all these clowns in Congress? <laughs> How do you keep up with the news like that? But I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think. You're alluding to the fact that this guy, George Conway, this week said the administration is a shit show inside a dumpster fire. That was the exact quote. And he has, there's a group of Republicans who have all signed basically, you know, a, a letter, you know, of, hey, Republicans, you need to save the party and fix some of this shit. Like, it, like a bunch of. Prominent, like talking heads, spokespeople, like representatives who are like after af- after this, which is great because because it wasn't a tsunami because the Democrats didn't take over absolutely every dog catcher like you know, <laughs> race in the country. Uh, Blotus quickly came out and said it was a red wall. It was a really good night for us. And, you know, it's like, dude, it's 4.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> Maybe wait for the other reason. <laughs> but, but yeah, so George Conway, who has before publicly tweeted. Married to Kellyanne Conway. Married to Kellyanne, uh, has tweeted, like, contradictory things the same day that she has put out things. But, yeah, that was his latest. I it, wonder if they're friends on Facebook. Did anybody ever look into yeah, that I, to see if they're even following each other? But, uh, I mean, I think they are... You're talking about trying to get their shit together. I don't know. As of the taping of this pod taping, recording of this podcast, I believe, I believe the president of the United States has not tweeted in 24 hours. I think. I think. <laughs> he, uh, did you see the picture of the incoming freshman class of Congress people? Oh, of course. Yes. And it was like. it was, Right. It was just like. Uh, it was like the audience of the Lawrence Welk show in 1957. All whiteies. And, and, you know, for the Dems, you know, you had a couple Muslims. I'm actually sorry. I That is nowhere near like the audience of the Lawrence Welk show because there were n- one woman. There was one woman. <laughs> there was one woman. <laughs> there was only one um, woman in the audience. But let's be, if you remember the picture, the guy 
there was like three rows of Congress people on the Republican, like on the page, and the guy in the far left. Oh, Dan, oh, Dan Crenshaw, the guy with the eye patch. Yeah, they, d- they, dude, they, where have you? You've heard he's been in the news. No, no really, I've been out of the country. You, you haven't been following. Oh, that guy, that guy was on SNL. Oh, was he really? Oh, let me fill you in. Please so, do. Pete Davidson, who's a you know guy. Oh, right, right. I saw, but I have no made, idea what this is about. All right, so Pete Davidson, the week before the election. Went on SNL's Weekend Update and did a piece on just making fun of Republicans' appearances, the people who are running for Republican on the Republican ticket uh, in various uh, states for various uh, offices. And uh, he got to Dan Crenshaw, and you know they show a picture. Basically, he was making fun of people's appearances, like he looks like this, he looks like that, and then Dan Crenshaw comes up, and you can even hear Michael Che off to the side when he sees the picture. Like almost like he hadn't seen it before. He's like, "Really? You're gonna do this?" Like, because the guy was an Iraqi war hero. He's done three tours of duty. He lost his eye to an IED while serving in Iraq, and he wears an eye patch. So Pete Davidson goes on and goes, "So Dan Crenshaw, uh, this guy, you know, might win if he didn't look like a if he if he didn't look like a hitman in a porno." And then he <laughs> he gets a laugh and a couple of groans. And he goes, yeah, I know, he lost his eye in war or whatever. And that line that just sort of like set off this this thing online, and they, they need to fire Pete Davidson, he needs to apologize, is this what the kind of thing, you know, like he's a war hero, that blah, blah, blah. Next week, Dan Crenshaw comes on live with Pete Davidson. Da- Pete Davidson first comes on the following week by himself on Weekend Update, And says, um, as many people who know me uh, would not be surprised, I made a poor choice last week. (laughs) And he goes on and apologizes to Dan Crenshaw, who then comes down and sits next to him. And they have this moment. um, And it's it was actually a really funny clip because he uh, apologizes to him. They shake hands. He's like, we're good, we're good. And then um, all of a sudden you hear a phone ringtone go off. It's an Ariana Grande song. It's like, just keep breathing. And he's like, you going to answer that? He's like, no, no, no. I'm just going to let it go to voicemail. I don't want to click it. You know, it's kind of rude. And then it's like, you know, it's an Ariana Grande song. It's like, oh, do you know who Ariana Grande is? Do I have to explain that reference to you? I get that. Okay, because you're looking at me with that, that but, but lovingly. I would not have been able to, if you, like, you played three Led Zeppelin songs and one of hers and said, I w- which one is it, Led Zeppelin? <laughs> <laughs> I might have said, oh, that one, but that's about it. Oh yeah, exactly. But um, so yeah, they sort of made peace. Although the guy was associated with like some sort of weird Nazi group. I don't know. Dan Crenshaw. You, you already gonna... said he's Republican. I, I know exactly it. right. Oh, oh, but what the, the one of the funniest lines that Dan Cren- this guy, Dan Crenshaw did say was, uh, "Thanks, Pete Davidson, for making a Republican look good last week." And uh, yeah. yeah. I know it doesn't. It's a lot funnier in the original comedian. No, I I just saw it when I was over there, but I didn't have the. Yeah, I didn't want to click the link. I didn't care that much. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so it was a big deal for like a week. Um, but I'm so yeah, it's funny because you you're like, hey, what about this guy? Doesn't he look like a pirate? It's like he's a much bigger thing than maybe you're making him well, out. Thank to you. Um, anyway, before we get to our defunct sponsor, the non defunct sponsor yet, but. Um, oh, we're doing that? Yeah, let's do, just really quick. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize when Joe had mentioned last week that Papaginos cha- filed for Chapter 11, which surprised me because, honestly, listening to the Pats game, you know, last Sunday, they were still running ads, you know, because yeah. Chris Hogan is one of their uh, spokespeople. It, okay, it's fun fact. Uh, Chris Hogan still plays football for the New England <laughs> Patriots, although, you know, he's, uh, I don't know, maybe he's, anyways, uh, but yeah, Joe, so lots of times when I come over here, Joe will have pizza for us, you know, so, you know, pizza. Sometimes I'm not in the mood for pizza, but it's nice because Joe will get the uh, cheesy breadsticks with the dipping sauce, marinara dipping sauce, so that's always a right. treat. Well, it's, a, it's, a little, it's a little break from wanting, <laughs> when you don't want pizza, uh, in triangle form, <laughs> in together form, and, and you, yeah, you kind of, kind of have to make your own, right? You know? <laughs> uh, but, it, but it wasn't like, oh, they're closing some. I guess you said no, the, no, they, they, well, they had, they had just up and closed a, a dozens of st- uh, restaurants. Maybe it wasn't dozens, but 
On Saturday, they were open. On Sunday, they were not. And, and they didn't tell the folks. They didn't tell the folks who happened to work there. They just were met with a sign that said, this restaurant is closed permanently. Please uh, eat at one of our other non-closed establishments. They, they had a big sign that says, guess who doesn't have a job? And then there's a little mirror under it. <laughs> Yeah, I know, and it's not so fun. It's not so funny when the homeless walk by it, but it's like <laughs> it's a little mean. But those those, those Arlington homeless just <laughs> roam the streets. You'd be surprised, my friend. You'd be surprised. So yeah, I don't know if Papa Gino's is still. I think they're still open in other locations, but they file for tri- <clears throat> Chapter Eleven bankruptcy protection. So you know they're on the bubble. Does, does Trump run Papa Gino's? Is this one is? <laughs> It, you know what? Anything with a papa and pizza is uh, not doing well this year. Well, the, I don't know. Papa John's is they, they're still around. They're, they're still around. Just, yeah. just not him. Yeah, just just not him. Right. All right. You don't see many Papa John's commercials, do you? Not with him. Yeah, he, right. he was a faith. Uh, now, Papa John fucked up a few things. He's not a cellmate with Jared. <laughs> I don't think. Oh my God. I don't think he's gone that far. Nope. I don't know. Anyway, so. We're going to uh, stretch our legs, but you listen to this week's defunct sponsor of the week. Steve Martin and John Candy just met. Flintstones, meet the Flintstones. They have nothing in common, except the next 72 hours. Stick with me. Do you feel this vehicle is safe for highway travel? Yes, I do. Steve Martin. Where's your other hand? John Candy. Between two pillows. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Those aren't pillows. Ah! No! Rated R. <laughs> Start to Wednesday, November 25th. Okay, sport. Uh, not a lot. The the Pats are on a bye week, which means nothing's happening in the sports world at all. Um you know, what? one of us, no names mentioned, Joe, uh, thought that the Pats were going to beat Mike Vrabel and the Titans and got smashed. So now they go into the bye week, limping into the bye week. Brady? Well, they, the, went, they went into the bye week. They went. And uh, what, Brady, one of the lowest rated passers in the NFL. Like, has he hit the cliff? And it's one of those things where he... He, and he hasn't been right all season. It's like, well, he doesn't have Julian Edelman. Oh, well, but, now he doesn't have Gronkowski. And oh, well, now he... Yeah, now he doesn't... He forgot to throw it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> so he, He's throwing it behind receivers now. Really behind. So, um, yeah, his line, whatever. Um, Mookie Betts, uh, Red Sox, great. MVP of uh, the American League. So, yeah. It, it's funny when you... when when It, it does still amaze me. Every now and then when you hear this is a baseball first or an American League first, Mookie Betts is the first um, MVP to have in the same season won a World Series, won the batting title, won a Golden Glove, and, you know, won coolest first name. (laughs) I don't know. But, like, like, there's only once National League and this, and uh, good for him. Mm -hmm. And then what are your thoughts on Tuka Rask's return? You know, I've never been an anti. First of all, what are your thoughts on me bringing up Tuka Rask's return? Uh, you know, I, what? I I was not even going to bring that up. Um, but it, thank you. No, it, it's impressive. Uh, I like. I, I'm not anti Tuka Rask, but it's one of those things where he's he's in the top half of goalies in the NF, in NHL, but he's in the top five pay goalies and he's not a top five goalie and he hasn't been a top five goalie in a couple of years. He's a goalie who uh, isn't going to lose you a lot of games, but he doesn't steal a lot of games. Uh, and now he's the first 20 games of the season. He wasn't overly impressive and they were tandem Tandeming, tandeming, tandem, anemone. Don't hurt yourself, kid. So they were splitting 50 50, but now it seems like Tuca was about to be relegated to being the backup. Um, took a personal leave back, you know, so, you know. Well, depression, right? So, you know, when you're about to lose your job, much like those people at Puppuccino's. <laughs> <laughs> You've been, you've been made the backup, and then there's a little mirror <laughs> where the <laughs> sign is. But the homeless people in the Bruce right. locker room who see that. Uh, so yeah, so you know, it's still too early. It's like uh, you know, 
the Celtics aren't doing what they were supposed to. The Bruins are pretty much where they're supposed to, but they still have 40 games before I give a shit about either one. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But that's it about sport for me. I, I think that's all for me, too. I think I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tuckered out. I'm, I actually have to lie down from just talking about all that sport. Then let's get right into video game. Before the Ooh. review, what's going on? Any any new games coming out? Any Have you played any new games? You get any new games, you're waiting for Christmas. Yeah, I think we're getting to that Christmas season, although Smash Brothers is coming out in a couple of weeks. Did you? Pre- yeah, we, I forgot, but the boys were like, oh, you pre-ordered. I'm like, oh, I did. So I can't slide that in the yeah, stocking. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's coming out the first week of December, and that is going to be the thing that everybody who's a Smash fan is going to be playing like before Christmas. You can't wait to Christmas, unfortunately. No. I mean, what what are the odds of us coming here for the podcast after it comes out and it not being played? Right, very slim. Yeah, very slim. Wait, slim, come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's a bummer. It's like. Um, you know, we are not doing any Christmas talk today. Uh, but first of all, where do you stand with this being Thanksgiving couple days? Mm-hmm. Um, Christmas music before Thanksgiving. Uh, I kind of, I don't like it. I don't, I don't, I don't like all these Christians shoving it in your face, saying, "Look at Jesus, Listen, look at Santa." That liberal war on Christmas, right there, <laughs> right, right. Fuck well, man. I mean, you. You know, I listen to Sirius XM radio, and they have a Christmas channel that they start around the holiday season. I didn't realize the holiday season meant Halloween. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, okay, it's Halloween, three, two, one, November 1st. You know, holiday music, Rudolph, you must listen now for two straight months. I can't take it. I, 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 I refuse. You know, a Hallmark channel that I don't really watch unless my wife is my wife you, well, it's, unless you know it's that time of the month and you're bleeding uh, and my, you, uh, your mangina is kind of itchy and- uh, I, it, well you know it's because I don't wipe properly but you know <laughs> that has neither here nor there but they you know play their months long thing of Christmas yeah there's a lot of Christmas Christmas commercials uh, it's everywhere I've been I went to Target this morning I mean now it's a little too late to complain about there being Christmas stuff up because we're so close to Thanksgiving but I'm pretty sure that the Christmas section in Target was up you know October 31st midnight you know November 1st you know last year uh, management and I were driving and somebody had one of these gigantic inflatable turkeys on their front lawn you know with a and and we thought oh my god we should be the people that get one of those, leave it up year round, and just change the hat. Like put a Santa hat on it, <laughs> put like a St. Patrick's Day hat on it. You Give know? it like a little IRS form on tax day. <laughs> you know, I mean, seriously. And when I got back, I went to Home Depot the other day, and then the Lowell's trying to get one to surprise her because you know it was fun. We this for Halloween. We did. We had a fun yard because we haven't had a yard of our own to be able to do this. So we had this, and it was so crazy. It was on a switch where it would inflate within seconds. This gigantic pumpkin carriage driven by a grim reaper, you know, and a nice de- demon horse. It literally took, uh, I'll post a picture, a second for it Sounds to metal. In, 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 very. Very. Um, had a Grim Reaper in the front yard, a skeleton that I told you. I also bought a little kid's like pirate outfit and I pirated the thing up. It was fun. Um, you know, and, and like she kept hating that I've never taken, we have a big, huge Christmas tree with a fern in the front yard. I've never taken the Christmas lights off it because. Christmas year round, and I kept turning, plugging it. We did the plug, <laughs> and I'm like, "Look, your favorite thing in the world is Nightmare Before Christmas. This is my own homage to it. This is my Christmas Halloween thing." But I wanted, to, I wanted to get one of those giant turkeys. Couldn't, couldn't do it. Um, so this week, I will if the snow fucking goes away. <laughs> but then I'm thinking, it's like, well, can I really put this up? But I, uh, I spent more than I should have on one of those big inflatable Christmas themed ad. ad- Oh for God. for the front yard. Uh, uh, it's funny. It's funny you mentioned that because I was gonna. I, I saw something on Twitter today and I liked it. Um, and uh, I meant to forward this to you, but I want to show it to you in person. Check this shit out. Wouldn't you love to have that in your backyard? 
That is Dude, making it my size. <laughs> that, that is the greatest thing that, I've ever seen. It came out in 1984. We're looking at the Star Wars Return of the Jedi Scout Walker Command Tower with speeder bike ride. And it's this eight foot tall kind of playhouse thing where you're in the command center of, uh, 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 you're in the command tower for a Scout Walker. Um, you know, it has like all the, the, the little control panel down at the bottom there. And then underneath it, there's a uh, speed bike, like see, what do you not a seesaw, but like um, like a rocking horse kind of thing. It's like yeah. swing. It's a swing, it, it, and it's but it's held by with one bar. First of all, that's a large dog in the photo. <laughs> second Fun of all, fact that uh, that dog is dead. Right, <laughs> <laughs> that dog never existed. It was painted. And then secondly, that uh, how many codes do you think that violates now? I mean, it doesn't look very stable. It's got literally four poles, and that's it, and a ladder. Um, you know, I think a good gust of wind would take that down in maybe three seconds flat. But it it just I try to find it on eBay. Just the speeder bike alone goes for four hundred and eighty dollars used. Yeah, how how does the uh the fully operational Death Star in the, in, <laughs> in the background is it? Did that come with it? No, that's that's a matte painting as well. But then there's like a Tie Fighter in the background. How do you know Matt painted that? I see you with the. I so get, let's get back to games. So Video here's games. one of the things about Christmas. It's like um, I may or may not. I have bought the uh, Spider-Man game, but mm-hmm. I don't want like. No. And, and and he's asking for it, but I'm like, eh, get sixty bucks. I'm not giving you that four weeks before I have to buy all this other. You stuff. could have asked us. We will let you borrow. No, it. But, you know, but you know, he wants. You know, his own, you know what I mean. All it's right. like, you know, yeah, uh, whatever. Hey, but teach their own. But I do, but that's the thing. It's like, how do I not, like, I pre-ordered the Smash, and he knows that. Something else is coming out. I think I pre-ordered Fallout uh, 70. Oh, Fallout 76. 76. That's, oh, that's, yeah, that's a weird one. Like, that's not the a typical Fallout game. It's, oh, it's not? No. Because he liked the last Fallout 4 yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, it's not like, I think it's a little bit different. It's like, a, it's almost like a Battle Royale kind of game, I think. Like a Is Fortnite. everybody jumping on the Fortnite kind of Overwatch game. thing? Yeah, I think so. I think it's a kind of a Battle Royale thing. I'm not sure. But uh, it's not your typical RPG version of, of Fallout. Um, but that's already out. Like that's in stores now. Okay, because I, I pre-ordered that, so I will. I'll have to get. Um, but seriously, if you want to, be- if you want to save yourself sixty bucks. No, I already got. But he uh, wants it. Like right, he's going to oh, want right. it, and it's it's not going to come back. Yeah, like that's the whole thing. I get, it will I get be, you. And I know there will be those sleepless nights upstairs <laughs> where you will not be able. to. I didn't one hundred five percent the game. <laughs> I didn't one hundred five percent the game. I don't know if you can, but you know, I'm sure there will be a way. Uh, so we do. We want to do a random get well, back do. into the swing. I do things. want to. I know you love your cardio, so get over there, honey, and <laughs> fetch me a sandwich and a random video game review. Are we doing that, or can I grab one of these? You could grab whatever you want, just not me. <laughs> okay, me. <laughs> oh, what did he grab? Oh, he grabbed a. What I. He just he's just handing me one of these stupid uh, game show handheld electronic games. Family Feud. So yay, I have a Family Feud. I don't know. I think I think you need. There's a, there's a book that goes with this. Have it, you the, the display, n- not really. I think I just kind of. You just don't look up. I think you try not to make too much eye contact or eye level contact when you're walking around in here. So Jacques now rummaging through not my garbage but my video game shelf. He's going to pull another gem off of the wall that is sure to dazzle the listeners with me, uh, you know, giving me my opinions on said game. And he's not going to take a long time. You know, he's not going to waste your valuable time, right. listener. Right. You're, he's not going to desert me and knowing full well that I can't speak at Stamper <laughs> mm. All right, so he grabbed a game off the wall. Ooh. and. Uh, open club face sandwich. Open club face. Use the open faced club. The sandwich. Mm, open faced club sandwich. <laughs> the Simpsons lawyer, a great show. Um, so he grabbed a game off the wall, and because of his heed, I can't see where. It, uh, okay, give me a. a let's, PS- play, let's play two questions. Okay. Is it a PS2 game? It is not. Okay. Um, can I have it? Because <laughs> I don't know what game you got. <laughs> Fallout Four. We, okay, yeah, I played it. It's a it's a wonderful game that uh, it came out s- several years Did ago. Did you play one through three? Oh, Fallout's one and two 
were for the PC. They 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 were like old like MS DOS era games, like Fallout. The first, uh, maybe they were Windows, but they were like more PC games. Then when Fallout Three came out, that's when you, they came out on the PS3. And I did I did play uh, Fallout Three for the Xbox 360. Uh, I I enjoyed that. Although I can't get too into these games because these are one of those games where you can customize the character to like the nth degree. You can really get lost and sidetracked, and you have to build shit. It's a real time vampire. That, that's um, uh, little guy. You know, I don't know where he saw it, but he wanted it, and I was okay with getting four because I. Got sucked into the commercials. Uh-huh. Thought the commercials for it looked great, and it's like because it's all Lexington and Concord, and you know this this, this Arlington, you yes. know this region, and it was like you know post apocalyptic nineteen fifty this region. Yeah, right. It's like it's but it takes place in like twenty seventy ish, uh, but it has a fifties uh, decor, and, and and you can drive. By like I forget where we were, but the little guy noticed one day, just oh my god, that's from Fallout, some building around. Yeah, exactly right. It's like a miniaturized version of of, of Massachusetts. Uh, it's a it's a fun game. I I, I got what maybe twenty hours into it, and then I kind of stopped. Like I, I do, like I do with most of these bigger games for the like, except for I think. Spider Man Four is the only game where I stuck with it and hundred percented it, and you know, like your hundred and five percent. Not yet. Okay, all right. I, I don't think you can. The, I, um, I just made that up. What was interesting with this, and I really liked the soundtrack. Fallout Four. So. Yeah, yeah, because it, it had two radio stations. It, it, right. It, you played it more recently than I have. So, what were the radio stations like? Well, it was all fifties music. It was different, you know, kind of, um, and but not. Original 50s music, like 50s style music. No! No! That's the fucked up thing. Yeah. So I thought they that they had a composer go because all most of the songs were nuclear or atomic bomb themed. Those were real. Those were real because wow. I looked them up. And it's like because I thought, you know, oh, that'd be fun. So, so in the story, a guy comes out of Krona... Freeze! How do you say it? Yeah, like a like a cryogenic. He was in a cryogenics lab, and you know his whole family had been woken years before. His wife's cryogenically had broken, and she's dead. But his son's capsule. But he's been frozen since like the late forties, early fifties, and now here it is, a hundred plus years later, and the world stopped. Like there's no new technology and stuff like that. But uh, but that's why everything looks the same. But so there's these two radio stations, and it's all the cheesy banter, and it's like you know guys, you know, updating about well, you know, their traffic reports are like these um these radiated giant rats have been seen down in yeah, the Charleston what they area, like the rads or something like that. Yeah, I forget what they're called. Um. But yeah, so the music, and I really thought that they did a really good job making it sound like these 1940s, late 40s, early 50s, like pre, pre-Elvis pre rock type songs, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, campy stuff, but I looked them up, and then I looked like the copyrights of the song, because, you know... I got that kind of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do the same thing with TV shows. Like I'll Wikipedia shit while I'm watching it, just to kind of find out what where the actors are and what you know the production was like. Um, so maybe that'll take us into uh, our Netflix picks. Okay, I was gonna say this before I went on the the trip. I, I and I've been wanting to talk about this for a couple weeks now. One night, like about three or four weeks ago, it's like a four part. Series and now they've done like two seasons of it and I haven't got into season two yet. Uh Hip Hop Evolution. Have you seen it? After we talked about it, you mentioned it to me after the podcast last week, and I did start watching the first couple episodes. And of course, my thing now is Netflix Netflix and Snore. Like that's what I do. I just fall asleep watching Netflix. So I didn't f- I watched the first two, which were really good. And uh, did that cover the Beasties? Did, no, I don't think the Beasties it was, weren't yet. No, no, the Beast it was the f- the first two were and WA, in Ice T, in Ice Cube, and that that era, and then the second one was like the like the like the dawn of hip hop, like in the seventies, with this like DJ that had the house parties and break dancing. Like I didn't realize that break dancing were literally the dances that these uh, that dancers would do during breaks. Like yep. they would take DJs would take the breaks of popular songs and mix them. So like they were the instrumental parts of songs. But those were the breaks, and then 
break dancing was the dancing that would occur during those. So I was like, oh, okay. I thought it was just a word. Like a little while ago, I remember seeing a John Mulaney talking about like, you know, remember when rap started and it was just a wiggy, wiggy, whack, whack, woo, you know, it's about, you know, it's like simple. And it's like, you know, party music. Yeah. And then it got like, and man, I was just fascinated by like the whole thing. And, and, and I love, you know, it's like, uh, uh, when Blondie, you see when like Blondie, I only got the first two. Yeah, so, so it, it's funny because a lot of people don't know it's the first rap what's considered rap that that hit like a top 10 was rapture by blondie she met a rapper named um uh fat 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 by freddy fat, fat freddy and told him i'm gonna write a song about you and you know she was blondie at the time and he was just this local club guy and yeah sure enough his career goes through the roof because blondie writes a song about him right um so that you're not you're not con- you're not counting walk this way as a rap, no that that came after. That was after, like Rapture yeah. came out before Walk This Way. Oh wow, yeah, and Walk This Way, and I've known the story of Walk This Way, but it's fabulous. Like Run DMC. Oh was, no, I'm talking about the original Walk This Way. Oh, that's not considered like full on rap. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, but that, but that Run DMC, but the history of all this stuff, and what I love is when Ice Cube, and they're really honest. It's like. Yeah, I wrote, you know, everybody gives me credit for starting the West Coast rap thing with this song, but I had a cassette tape, and it's so funny how many of these people, it was just from passing around. Circulating tapes. Cassette. And they would have rap battles, and they would have, um, rap, you know, rap battles, and they would have band battles and stuff. Um and the circulated tapes, and I forget the two. St- I'm going to go back and watch it again. But there was Band A and Band B. Band A won the rap battle this night because they had more of their friends there for the crowd applause. Yeah. But I, I don't know if it was like Rick Rubin who had heard Band B's performance that night. It yep. was like boom, these guys are it. And it was Public Enemy or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, but, but then you go back and forth. It's like, but yeah, the history of Public Enemy, and it's like, you know, how smart those. I mean, well, Public Enemy is East Coast, but yeah, I'm kind of yeah. But how smart like those guys were, and and, and, and you know, it's really. It, 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 I'm not going to give away the it's whole required show, viewing for white re- people. It really is. No, it's a, you know, but it's it's fun. It's like when you know when you find out. Like I said, I mean, I like a lot of that music. I, I love, you know, Public Enemy and a huge MWA guy. But when, you know, you have Ice saying, yeah, I heard this mixtape or this guy in Philadelphia who had this song 6 a.m. And then they track that guy down and interview him. And it's funny because he won't do an interview unless you bring him cake. <laughs> remember that? And the cake has to be good. Oh, yeah. I think I remember that part. Yes. Oh. I got into, I mean, I briefly got into like hip hop and stuff like when The Chronic came out, like Dr. Dre. Like, my friend was a huge uh, uh, Dr. Dre, like, hip hop fan. Like, so I, I was introduced that way in Snoop Dogg. And, um, yeah, and I, I mean, I'd heard Beastie Boys before that, but I wasn't like way into the Beastie Boys because I'm a nerd, a super nerd. But, uh, yeah, this is. I like this because it's it it it, it doesn't it, it's not chronological either. It bounces around like it go. It starts with like NWA, but then it goes back and then it goes right. forward. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching and the, the piecing it together. The and and I always love whether it's a sport when when you got a current player saying, "Yeah, I got this from this guy who got this who really understand." You know, that's one of the things you know. I, I, I do. I appreciate when people understand, yeah, you're not the first person yeah. to come up with this. And that's part of the biggest takeaway. Is like These guys weren't just like guys who lucked in. Like They just had a natural talent. They lucked into it. These are smart guys that knew how to write. They knew yep. how to collaborate. They, they worked to network, their ass off. And, yeah, and had the fucking work ethic to do, that's, the, to do what they needed to do. You know, it it is. It's one of those things where, you know, again, again, getting back to, you know, the big three tour we just did. A lot of these bass people want the guys to come back because they're they said these kids see you and they have no idea the work you went into. And that's the same thing with this. When you see that these guys truly, you know, and, and again, you know, the people like ice, you know, it's you and I can appreciate the music. But in a million years, we don't kid or we, we we can identify again more with the Beastie Boys than a lot of these guys. I identify more with uh, 
uh, vanilla ice. Vanilla, <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> seriously. Uh, but these guys were really living the life in, in a lot of cases, but at the same time, almost living like a double, you know, uh, like a secret identity of like putting in 10 to 12 hours a day and and the the work that they would do to write and why they would collaborate and like you know how NWA came to be because I mean it was completely different people from different walks of life but they all you know contributed something you know different yeah and it was where, where the sum of the whole was greater than you know the the the, 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 the something of the part. part so yeah my my pick and now that I'm back, you know, I'll, I'll watch and part two. Better than ever. Uh, but I cannot, cannot stress more uh, hip hop evolution. So I got two. One's more of an honorable mention. I guess I, I watched Adam Sandler's 100% Fresh uh, stand up special. Uh, I, it was good, in my opinion. I liked it. It's not like an Adam Sandler movie where it's just like. I don't like most of Adam Sandler's stuff. I loved Adam Sandler, like on Saturday Night Live. On uh, the, the first album he put out was great. His follow up album was also good. Um, so Everyone's his album's gonna laugh at you. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna laugh at you. <laughs> we bought your cock and balls for mama. Uh, <laughs> uh, there was a lot of good material there, but um, this was he took his show on tour, so it's not just one location. Literally, they bounce around for, to between ten different locations, and he does mostly songs. He has a keyboard player that I guess he co collaborates. He's co wrote all of his songs with for years, and um, it's just he and, and and the keyboard player, and he does some stand up material, but mostly songs. And then he also has like a TV screen behind him, so when he gets into his more elaborate songs, he has like almost like a music video behind him. And one of the more touching moments of the of the special was toward the end where he sings a song called Farley. And it's all about Chris Farley. And it's it's really like, it's like, oh, you're not gonna make me cry, Sandler. I didn't cry when, when, San, when he died. I didn't cry when he died, but I won't, I won't cry now. Um, he was, uh, he, it was a good show. I, I like that. So that's sort of an honorable mention. But the other thing that I kind of stumbled upon was this new video app, and it's a free TV app. It's been out for, I guess, a couple of years, but now it's making its way to more streaming and smart TV devices, Pluto TV. And it's it's probably not for everybody. I kind of like it because it, it plays... Old mo- match games? Yes! <laughs> I yes. just took a shot in the dark here. <laughs> well, when you got a really small target and a really big dart... <laughs> You might as well take the shot. But, um, well, the one of the things is that, yes, Buzzer, the, the game show channel that's f- on f- television now, the free television now, is part of the package. Well, that, that's it now. What what did Buzzer come from? What? No, no. I'm just, what? what was the evolution of Buzzer? It oh, was, it was, no, bu- oh, Buzzer is just the, it's the Buzzer. You really want me to get into the Buzzer channel? No. <laughs> okay, go. I, yes, I, yes and no, but tell me about the app. So uh, it's called Pluto TV, and it's essentially like, it's, a, it's all free television. It has commercial breaks, which are... The way they're implemented is kind of glitchy, but whatever. Uh, but it's it's almost like a, a cable format, like a basic cable format. Like you go into a menu, there are channels, but there's like a Mystery Science Theater channel. There's like a Rift Tracks channel. There's a bunch of sports channels. You know, like even like different colleges and different, you know, whatever. Then there's like a, a couple of like old classic cartoon channels, music, like live music channels. So, but it's all it's all free. Like you can, if you, you on your iPhone, you can just download this Pluto TV app, and you know if you get a good connection, you can just kind of flip through it and and watch regular programming. And you can they have on demand stuff, and they all like they and they play uh, they have like a ton of movie channels. The on demand movies are actually pretty good. I think the only caveat is they're with commercials, you know. And I don't know if they've been edited for content either, so I don't know how squeaky clean it is either. have you watched a movie i watched <laughs> a little bit of popeye the remember the the robin williams popeye? On purpose yes I, i'm stupidly nostalgic for that movie because it came on 56 when i was young channel 56 when i was younger and i had a vcr and i recorded it because it was robin williams and it was popeye so i'm like how could this go wrong <laughs> And then, um, but that was the soon to be unemployed executives (laughs) over at Paramount. (laughs) And I, um, 
I got into it. It's I, I would watch it over and over. So I like there's and it, I didn't know that. Um, speaking of Popeye, the musical, uh, Harry Nilsson wrote all the music for that. Uh, I, I did not know that until I wa- looked it on Wikipedia the other day. But um, but I was yeah I was getting into like they're playing like old cartoons like Inspector Gadget. Literally, they were playing the like the Legend of Zelda cartoon. They were playing the Super Mario show. You know, so like all of these like. Square like the, they were playing Heathcliff for the cartoon, and it was just um, all these things. That I'm like, yeah, they, they, like, this is aimed towards losers like myself who don't want to appreciate new things and only want to watch old things. Um, they had the what else did they have? Uh, the is that uh, why you like milf porn so much? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know me so well. What else did they have? Oh, the Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour. Wow! Now you're talking, and I'm like, wow! Like, like, I, 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 and I didn't realize, and I saw as I was Wikipediaing that 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 was part that was canceled in part of the r- rural purge of 1971 and 1972. Apparently, like all these country themed shows, like on CBS, were pulling in high ratings, like Hee Haw and Beverly uh, Billy Hillbillies, <clears throat> uh, Andy Griffith, Mayberry RFD. All those shows were pulling in really high ratings, but they weren't hitting the demographic, the young demographic. So then in the 70s, you know, they purged all those and brought in, you know, stupid shows like All in the Family and Mary Tyler Moore, like, you know, those dumb liberal ass shows. But Glenn Campbell the was. Norman Lear Network, really. Like yeah, <laughs> exactly. So Pluto TV is, a, yeah, it, you have to sit through like repetitive commercials, almost like watching. They play blue bloods. No, it, where every it, <laughs> commercial break is the same. Kind of, yeah, but it's like four. It's only four like commercials, so it's like two minutes long, and it's almost like the ads they play on YouTube. But uh, I noticed that after ten o'clock, for some reason, I only get one commercial played four times in a row, and it's for AdamandEve.com, the adult website where you can order like lingerie and dildos and shit like that. There's like a they play a a clean ver a clean commercial for this website four times in a row, and it doesn't fucking matter what channel you're watching. You could be watching the Cartoon Channel if it's after ten o'clock. You have to sit through four straight Adam so, and Eve. So their sales department just dialed it in, right? They they're not getting the demographic. <laughs> you know, it's funny. So I didn't. W- one day we'll talk about that purge of those shows that were, you know, highly rated but not getting the younger demographic, and that's. Uh, is that where CBS came from today? Is that where they... Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, like, stuff like... But then there's, like, a little bit more on that. Like, stuff like the Lawrence Welk Show and Hee Haw were canceled from network, and then they thrived for, like, a decade and a half after that in syndication. Um, but, yeah, it's just fascinating. TV's fascinating. I think so. I, I think, think so. We should do a show about that sometime. Yeah, why not? So, I think that's all. What's your parenting tip? Please, parent me. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, on tour, um, found myself in a conversation with two people I didn't know before the tour who we created the parenting tip of the week about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, All righty. So, so let me be clear. Um, For once. Anybody who's ever accidentally listened to one of the now 102 podcasts that we've done who's heard a parenting tip of the week um, – you know, for the most part, like 75% of them are just hung in cheek, over the top, being awful for comedians' sake. You know, like, you know, like pressure points don't leave a mark. You know, one of my favorites. Uh, but we started doing this because we were talking one day about all the great parenting advice you get um, unsolicited. And often the best parenting advice comes from people without children. Of course. So... Me and one of the guys were having a dad conversation. It was a nice dad conversation. In fact, the day before on the bus, this you know player you know uh, we you know was talking about some stuff, and and then I'm like, hey, you know, yesterday you talked about that, and and I and we we had this really nice dad moment. And one of the guys on the tour who isn't a player, uh, but who is part of it, you know, who's hey, okay guy, you know, except like he's a you know a bag of like used tools um no names mentioned eddie and uh and and you know another guy don't have kids we're interjecting on our conversation basically telling us how uh you have to hit kids and why and how they got beat as kids and those locals man uh, how 
You're talking about the local Middle Eastern people, right? No, I'm talking about the guys on the bus with us. You know, because uh, the Adrian Peterson thing had come up. Oh, yeah. And how that was really a hit job and blah, blah, blah. And people, and I'm like, no, actually, this is what happened. And the league ruled this way, but it was the sponsor who pulled out. And then it was the Vikings who had suspended him after the Vikings were ecstatic that the league wasn't going to. Ex- you know, play uh, wasn't going to suspend him. They were going to suspend him one game. I'm not getting back to the whole thing, you know, and, and one of the guys and I, you know, it was like, well, it's a cultural thing. It's like, no, nah, hitting, hitting kids is to the point where you're, you know, and what you well, have, they're saying it was okay to hit your kids if you're black. Yes. Okay. That, what, one, one guy was black. One guy was white. Uh-huh. And one guy was saying, well, it's a cultural thing. And that's how we were raised. I'm oh, like, in the South. In and the and I, well, you know, and my argument is always, okay, so, my kid goes, you know, so so some 10-year-old kid goes and burns a cross on the ROM because that's the culture he was raised in, and it's okay. That makes it okay? Completely different, you know? It's like, well, black people, they're like, no, hitting is hitting. It's like, look, my kids are assholes a lot. You know, no no, no surprise. Um, you know, and, and but, but, you know, making a kid in 2016 at the time go pick a switch, beat him with it, and you know have his testicles bleed yeah there's there's a line you know and i'm not saying you know now and then kids might other kids for i know for a fact other kids need to be hit i've been in stores where i've almost gone over and hit <laughs> other <laughs> people's you were about to volunteer your services <laughs> here's yeah. my adrian peterson impersonation you know it's funny uh, chris titus has the thing but my dad would beat other people's kids and look at a parent's store and say you're welcome <laughs> you know uh but but no but then it segued into other things about how you have to do this with kids and this and you know one guy's like mid-30s one guy's like mid-40s you know, neither have kids or plan on having kids, but yet couldn't stop doling out the advice. Um, so my parenting tip of the week is if you don't have kids, shut the fuck up. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe just, maybe just, you know, sit this one out, give, 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 give that some thought, uh-huh. you, you know? Right. All right. I get you. Yeah. So your parenting tip of the week is have, be a parent. Yeah. yeah be a parent. <laughs> and then, do, and, and, and look, if you if every now and then somebody has said we've tried this in a similar situation if it's a fr- if you or whatever I've seen the way that you've done dealt with your boys and there's been times when I've been like I, I've dealt with my boys that's been great you know what I mean it's like it's one of those things where honestly when you take video games away from the kids who's it harder on <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know? right but but you have to uh-huh. and i've seen you do that you yes, know what i mean right my younger one is still on like a screen blackout and and and, and we, that thre- we know of <laughs> <laughs> we threatened to do that and it's like but no but that's that's again that's two parents talking who respect each other and again you know it's like look you know when i get great parenting advice from my parents you know what i mean who it, uh-huh. it comes from a good place, but look, if, you know, and if you don't have kids and you see something, I'm not saying, you know, but like management, for instance, she, she raised another family before she had kids, like absolutely for 10 years. And after having a kid a year later, she felt so bad to how she had thought of other moms in the past and advice that she had given, you know, and same thing. My friend, all star Tommy's wife is a, is a nurse. Uh, sorry, that's, she's a doctor and she had treated kids before. And she's, you know, talked to parents about it. She had a great talk with her one day on one of her hockey trips in, in Scottsdale, where she was like, after having her girls, she regrets so much of the bad advice that she had given parents. She was giving advice as a medical professional, um, as an experienced ER room doctor and all this stuff, and how much it changed. Like, you know, not that what she had said was wrong, but it's it just changes everything. It changes your perspective on the whole situation. Yeah, you actually there's an there's an emotional part of parenting that comes along with it. It's not just like black and white. Well, you know, just do this. It's just plain and simple. Just do it, set it, forget it, walk away. That's the way it is. It's like, no, there's a lot of gray area. There's a lot of compromise. There's a lot of um, introspection. Yeah, it, it's, it's, yes. And, and and they tug at your heartstrings, the little ones. They, you know, you love the fuckers. You know, we, we, we just had a friend who visited us who absolutely loves my boys absolutely loves my boys and it's wonderful but some of the parenting advice or you know it's like oh i would never let my kid do xyz it's like 
We'll see. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. it. That's my parenting. Okay. Well, you know what? We've said a lot on this podcast. Uh, and we will say more on our Stan Lee podcast later this week on Thanksgiving. So yeah. happy Thanksgiving, if America. If your family, you know, if the football game isn't going your way. Well, hey, the Pats aren't playing. Why are you watching football anyways on Thanksgiving? You should be watching the Mystery Science Theater Returns, you know, new season on Netflix. No, wait. Don't do that. Listen to us. No, no. Uh, listen. Go go, go with Mystery Science Theory. It's Pat Oswald. Um I had uh, a going out on uh, on a Dan Cray song, Tailspin, which I think I think will make it to the set list on our show at Uncharted and Lowell's Friday, um, December fourteenth. Unless, unless is there a Thanksgiving themed song that you rather go? Just where, just where the hell has to have a Thanksgiving song? Um, not one that's coming to mind. I'm sure there's a food oriented song where he mentions turkey. Um, we could play the uh, the turkey, the Thanksgiving song by uh, Adam Sandler. Turkey, lurky, do and turkey, lurky, dap. I eat that turkey and I take a nap. <laughs> Thanksgiving <laughs> is a special night. Jimmy Walker used to say dynamite. That's right. I'm not going near the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm all done. Oh, um, okay, so on that note, Jacques, please, for the love of God, if you do one thing this Thanksgiving, it's don't forget... Breaks a gun.